All right. Uh, okay, we're going to move out of the Big Ten, but only out of the Big Ten because Brad Underwood let another killer slip from underneath his watch. <laughs> Jaden Epps is in Georgetown now. We made our list of breakout players for this season, and Jaden Epps was on it specifically because we believe that Jaden Epps is going to be the first option on an Ed Cooley team and Ed Cooley teams are always competitive. And quite frankly, we liked what we saw last year. You and I have never moved off of that. No matter what the rumors have been, no matter how bad of a teammate it is, how, how bad his body language was in the Northwestern game. Fine. I get all that matters. Jaden Epps went to a scrimmage Georgetown versus Wake Forest. Yes. It's a scrimmage. I get it. Whatever. Who cares about these numbers? I care about these numbers. He had 46 points in a scrimmage. Do you know how hard it is to score 46 points in a basketball setting, no matter what that setting is. Like, I, I I don't care if he's on the court with nine other division one basketball players in any setting playing kids from another school and he gets 46 points. That matters yeah. to me. He's scored. This, sorry. I was gonna, I, no, 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 no. I got to say something. This isn't a pro-am by the way. I feel like people are approaching like this. This was a scrimmage with a season 20 days away. They didn't, they didn't just lot, you know, be lackadaisical on defense. He gave them boys 46. The final score was 81 to 77, and Jaden Epps had 46 of their 81 points. He was 15 for 24 from the field. He was 6 for 11 from three. And oh, by the way, he chipped in four assists. Sounds like a breakout star point guard to me. Carter, something that a little program in Champaign could have desperately used. I don't want to make this all about Underwood and his decisions and his roster management. Let's start with just Jaden Epps. Does this swing your expectations for Jaden Epps in a major way this season? I mean, not necessarily because I I kind of thought that he would be a breakout guy for Georgetown. Like he, the, Georgetown needs a guy like him who can take a lot of shots and make a lot of shots. And there's a lot of shots on this team. And Cooley likes, like you said, he will make it all about Epps too. Like I think he'll have no problem doing all that. Obviously if a guy is scoring half of a team's points in a game where they score 80 something, like the coach has no problem trusting him and knowing that that guy can go get buckets. Um, so I, you know, I think that Jay Neff is in for a really, really big year. And if he is in for a really big year, Illinois fans are going to have to tell themselves, you know, we didn't need him. His body language is bad. He was a bad teammate. Okay. I get that. But um, you know, can't you work around that? Can't you talk to a guy? Maybe, Maybe something that you did is what made him be a bad teammate and made him have an attitude. Maybe he was upset because he guys were playing over him that shouldn't have been playing over him. And he was right about that. So, you know, I don't know. It's it's gonna be a very long year though, if Jay Neffs like becomes like first team or an all big east player or something like that. And all while Illinois struggling at the point guard position. So <laughs> gotta choose my words carefully here. Mm. I like Illinois is going to be fine. Illinois is going to be a good basketball team this year, even without a point guard. Georgetown, I don't think is going to be that good. Like I'm not overreacting thinking Georgetown is going to factor into the big East because Jade Neps had a really good game. I do believe that Jade Neps is going to be like the face of this Georgetown team though. And I believe that before hearing these numbers, but like, I'm pretty sure how this is going to work is Jade Naps is just like their first and second option offensively. And it's going to lead to some really clunky games. Like when Jade Naps is off and has a bad game, Georgetown's going to really struggle. When Jade Naps is good, he's going to put up some prolific numbers and he's capable of that. Like he's not necessarily a run the show, make everybody better guy, but man, he scored in double digits 20 times last year as a freshman at Illinois while splitting minutes with Sky Clark for half the year and then getting in the doghouse. Like, that's that's pretty impressive for a guy who was in the doghouse 90% of the season <laughs> at Illinois. So, like, I don't think production was ever a question with Jaden Epps, especially now that you, he's going to enter a team that wants him to be individually successful in their attempt to win games themselves. Um, I'd also just point out, man, like, Epps had a Kansas offer and a UConn offer out of high school. Like he had some of the most prestigious guard coaches in the country wanting him to come play for them. Like Epps to me is a guy that even if year one was clunky, you can't let him go. <laughs> like, I, and that's, that's just my biggest pushback on the way Brad does stuff. It's just like, he he's so quick to move off or deprioritize 
prioritize guys. And I, look, I think it's impossible to have the abs conversation without talking through the specifics of what we believe happened and what we were told happened here. I was told that in the off season from a reliable source that Jaden Epps and Underwood had meetings and Epps wanted to be promised a starting spot on this mm-hmm. team. Underwood would not promise him that at this time. He was also hoping Tiger Campbell was going to hit the portal. Like, Yuri Collins, like there were names of superstar guards that Brad Underwood in his mind was prioritizing over keeping Jaden Epps. And look, there are levels to this. I said this in the discord. Um, I'm not asking him to bend over backwards for a kid that has some iffy personality concerns. I'm not asking that, but the best coaches in the country are capable of doing both. Like I'll point to your coach cart. Like he, he gets a big rap as a guy who would never go in the portal even though Joey Hauser was from the portal, Tyson Walker's an all American. He's from the portal. He tried to get two role players from the portal last year. He just retains his players while doing it. (laughs) And he he's crafted this narrative of like, I'm loyal to my guys. Brad Underwood has crafted a narrative of the opposite. Brad Underwood has crafted a narrative of I'm always going to replace my guys with better guys. And that works when you get better guys, it doesn't work when the better guys come in and they're worse players than Jay Naps. And I, I don't care what people want to say. Every single player on Illinois this year that's going to step on the court in the backcourt that's not Terrence Shannon is a worse basketball player than Jay Naps. It is what it is. And you gave up potentially three years of that because you wanted to flirt with Tiger Campbell, who didn't even want to play college basketball. That's what was going on here. And that's what I believe happened here. Do you, is that your read on the situation too? Cause maybe I'm just blind and I'm crazy and I'm messing this up. No, I, I truly do think that is the read on the situation. I think a lot of Illinois fans are kind of saying like, I mean, but you see what happened with guys who have issues. I mean, Car- Carbello had like the, the off, you know, the personality kind of issues. It was a, it was a completely different situation. I feel like Carbello is one of one person, which is how his personality is, you know, Uh, there's so many different types of basketball players to me a freshman has issues thinking he should play maybe being a bad teammate is that not like part of being a freshman sometimes I get like it's not an excuse for him but like that happens as a freshman like maybe that's something you get past you look back on and you laugh at it like oh that that happened but I don't know just to let basically let a guy like Jay Nips Jay Nips walk just seems like a bad decision to me. It's honestly, it seemed like a bad decision at the time before he even did this with, with, you know, having the big, big game with Georgetown, just because I don't know, you're having this situation where you're scrambling for a point guard when you have a point guard who's been in your system and wants to play for you, but he just wants some type of, I mean, I don't even know like if the word was guaranteed spot, but like, it's not out of pocket for Jay Neps to want like some type of statement, like, Hey, I'm sticking with you. I did this freshman year with you. I want to be a. I want to be a part of this team. I like. I want to be the point guard for this team. I just feel like maybe some leeway or some kudo point should be given to him for one stay. And you basically said, "No, I'm good. I don't want you to stay," or "I'm not. I'm not promising you. I'm not promising you that you're going to be the point guard of this team." Which I don't know. Like it. It doesn't seem to me, outside looking in hindsight, twenty twenty, like that would have been the worst thing to say to him. Yeah, just promise it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, probably. I'm not advising and, to and, make and, any and you, promises. And, but... and if you get somebody else like Yuri Collins, then break the promise. All right. 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 <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you can do both. It's a balance. And I just, I don't think Brad's willing to play that game. And that says something good about Brad. It says he's genuine. It says he's honest. But I think that can be to a fault of his own roster building sometimes. Um, Final question for me on this. Oh, no, real quick. I want to say the, like, people have pointed back to, oh, check his body language in the Northwestern game. I'm sorry, Cart. You can tell me if I'm overstepping here. I am body language PhD guy. Okay. <laughs> like that's that is my specialist, my major, whatever you want to call it. I never saw anything that was worth like we need to cut ties with Jaden Epps from. Did he pout in the Northwestern game? Yes. He wanted to be on the floor. He wasn't on the floor. Some people have said he refused to go back in the game. I don't believe that for a second. I just believe that it, it, it was body language stuff and the sources that we have within the program have never told us otherwise. 
you don't cut ties with a guy because of that. Okay. Like last year's team in general was toxic as hell. You know who else pouted? Matthew Meyer. He played every game at all times. Like you can't have a double standard with guys with personality issues. Some of the best Illinois players in the last five years have been guys that pout. It is what it is. And uh, back to Ty Rogers whole thing, this whole off season was, well, we got good people in the locker room. Finally. We gonna see if good people's better than good basketball players, and uh, you don't. I mean, you, you, <laughs> like you lost a guy that just can go for forty six in a game. That's what just happened. <laughs> Does Ty Rogers scored forty six points in his career? There's a re- there's a reason why there's not a good people section on box scores. It's crazy to me. Um, final question: If Jaden Epps was on Illinois, how would that alter your preseason expectations for them? I would probably have them as my third third team in the Big Ten. I would have them clearly three. I would have them fringe top ten in the country if Jaden Epps was just the starting guard on this team. It's crazy. Like I fringe I, top I ten in the country matter. too. I think it would have mattered, man. If you if you were telling me the team was just Epps, Shannon, Hawkins, Danger, with all the rest of the depth pieces they added, but they have Epps. Like <laughs> They have the one thing I've been saying they're missing and they had it under their umbrella and they let it go for no reason or for reasons, but reasons I disagree with. Like it just, it solves so much of what I was asking for. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe the scrimmage means nothing and Epps will flame out and Georgetown will be horrible. It's certainly within the realm of possibility, but I think, uh, I mean, I just laughed so hard when I saw like the first thing I see is that he attempts 24 shots from the floor, super efficient with four assists and 46 points and a win against Wake Forest. Like that's after Illinois fans spent all summer trying to tell me Epps didn't matter. That's insane. Insane. Eh, classic. 